It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview a business owner with the podcast, The Sports Gene. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Excited to be here, Brandon. Appreciate you reaching out. Thank you. Can you talk about how you got started in the sports podcast industry? Absolutely. Um, when I was a kid, I, I really loved getting into sports, um, but God didn't give me the uh, the body and 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 uh, you know physique to be in a professional sports setting. So I knew one day I was going to be doing something in sports, whether it was going to be in media or it was going to be in management. Uh, and in the front office. So I'm um, currently pursuing my PhD in sports analytics. I'm in my dissertation right now and, and uh, started getting into, into the sports business by attending analytic conferences and meeting some, some very important people that kind of steered me the right way. And then all of a sudden I took on the name, the sport gene, in the community and started doing a lot of analytics with, with some, some big teams and then um, started my own podcast. And that's how we got started. Can you talk about how you came up with the name, the sports gene? Absolutely. So, you know, when everybody thinks sports, it's hard to really say that sports is a science. And so um, I just wanted to kind of mix in the sports genes, how the, the, the term into the lab podcast is because we wanted to mix sports scientists into kind of the unique nature of how we mix analytics and, and, and the science of, of studying the human element, as well as the numbers uh, to how you can organize and manage a team in sports. And so kind of mixing it all together and getting a, a unique name. So we, we came up with the sport gene. Um, it's kind of a, a family thing. My, my, wife, my wife and I are talking about it and, and we thought, what well, would be kind of cool to mix science and sports and sport gene kind of came up. And so we ran with it. What kind of segments do you have on your podcast? So we have we have an array of segments. So we we kind of like to feature our listeners. Our listeners are called labsters. So if you're a listener of the show, we call you a labster and um, you can come on and be a part of some trivia. So we do trivias for NFL, MLB, uh, really kind of any sport, NBA. And uh, you can come and win great prizes on there, like $25 gift cards or jerseys for your favorite teams or tickets to a professional game. Um, sometimes we'll have segments that include uh, lobsters where it comes to like pickums. So if you uh, want to be picking the games of the week and who wins and you can beat us, you get those prizes as well. Um, on the news end, though, we cover what's called a main segment called Around the League or Read All About It, which covers some of the biggest news details around professional and college sports. And then we have different sports scientists across the nation and even in Bali, Indonesia and Canada that come on and talk about their specific regional sports and talk about big news there with their sources. Um, so we just kind of get diverse. We have currently on roster 17 sports scientists. And so we have coverage and a multitude of areas and our, our reach out base right now is about 3,500 people. So we're continuing to grow and grow. That's very wonderful that you have like such a high reach out. Can you talk about what um, Into the Lab is? Yep. So Into the Lab started as a single person. It was just me talking about sports, whether it was the Houston Rockets, which is my home base um, coverage team and, and, uh, or the Dallas Cowboys. And then it expanded to where I included Boston because my co-host became um, part of the show. And as we continued to grow more and more of the sports scientists, the more and more we wanted to include um, coverage of all the leagues. So really into the lab is, is one of three things. It's, it's where you can get all the latest news and updates on players you love and teams that you love. That's one. Two, it can be where you can attend those trivias or those contests and get those great prizes. And then three, it's where you can kind of get an update on, on how it's going with the sports scientists and what we're working on behind the scenes. Some of our projects included competing for an iHeartRadio um, competition that we, we were a finalist for, um, also a DraftKings competition we were a finalist for, and just kind of being a part of that movement and watching an up-and-coming uh, podcast. That's Congratulations on being a finalist for the iHeart and the DraftKings. Oh, thank you. What are some of your future plans for the sports gene? So for the sport gene itself, I plan on launching my dissertation study within the next couple of months. Um, it'll be a study on, on 
the human element of analytics. So studying the commitment level of athletes and how committed they are to an organization based off of their relationship with a coach. So how their coach interacts with them and that organization um, commitment level fluctuates and does that does that affect their output? So do points per game go up or down? Do assists per game, minutes per game go up and down? Does their level of output go up or down? And that's where the sport gene is heading in the next year, um, getting and completing that study. And then um, really kind of merging with Blue Collar Media Group, which is um, the flagship for my podcast and and making sure that that all streamlines together once that study is done. What are some of your future plans for Into the Lab? Yeah, Into the Lab's growing. So, um, you know, the big part about Into the Lab is that we want to do multi-night episodes and kind of chop them up. So in the future, we'll probably have an episode coming out Monday, Wednesday, Friday going forward, um, split up into basketball, uh, college, and and football, and uh, making sure that we can reach out to the specific niche communities and, and continue to have our videos go out and, and, and uh, reach out to people, um, but giving more opportunities to all of our Lapster listeners and making sure that they get more chances to get to see their favorite teams or wear their favorite team's colors. Who are some of the people that you've interviewed for the sports gene? Yeah, so, um, you know, we've had a couple of people. Uh, Vince Young reached out to uh, our, our podcast and, and uh, did a shout out and came on. Um, a couple of the pro athletes, uh, Darrell Fe- Darius Fleming came on and, and was great. Uh, we had the Chicago coverage uh, sports talk radio uh, up there. W is he WM one oh five three came on. He did a pick 'em segment with us. He was on for quite a while. That was really fun. Um, and and really, I've had British analysts come onto the show uh, who covered the Jaguars. That that was amazing and. Just recently, one of our uh, one of our very own um, sports scientists, Kenny Cotterell, had JJ Reddick from the New Orleans Pelicans come on and do an interview, and and so just a lot of reach out and following as we continue to grow. Um, and you, of course, at the Sport Gene is where you can find me on any of of the social platforms where you, where you can see the the podcast links. Who have you had on as an interview for Into the Lab? So into the lab has has really grown. Um, we've had various athletes, a couple of college athletes that are up and coming. When we did the NFL draft, we had exclusive interviews with several different um, specific athletes that were in the first, second, and third rounds, and then we kind of teetered off in the in the later rounds. We'll be doing the same for the NBA draft, doing live coverage. Um, we were supposed to be at the draft. We were one of the media outlets that were going to be there. And then when coronavirus happened, we had to uh, settle for virtual coverage. And so that was really kind of a, a letdown, but um, really kind of continuing to bring on coaches and more of the analytics mind and making sure that we can get um, some front office members this season is important. How did it feel to know that you were one of the people that were going to be as a media coverage for the NBA draft? Yeah, that that was a big thing. Um, we were just starting out um, in a different organization called Overtime Heroics, and Blue Collar Media broke off and started their their own branch of media coverage. And when they when they received us as the flagship podcast, um, they asked us to be the main people to go to these draft settings. And so when they received the news that they got accepted, and we were the podcast to cover. I mean, I. I was over the moon. It was a fully paid trip. It was going to be um, all of our sports scientists were going to meet for the first time because, again, we've all only been together um, virtually. So to meet everybody all together would have been awesome and, and to give out free swag to everybody and, and interview players. That was going to be probably the highlight of my year. And and um, I was over the moon, man. I was over the moon. Um, I just it, it probably be the best news of the year if I didn't just get my newborn daughter five weeks ago. So I, I that that that's the that's the best feeling so far this year. Can you talk about doing interviews and partnering with um, Pitch Ninja? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, when it comes to uh, doing interviews, uh, a big part about about planning is making sure that you're you have the the right setting with the with the people you're working with, especially in this niche. Um, when you're talking about players that you're working with. 
Um, it's important that you you put your questions straight forward and that you make sure they're fully prepared before you have that conversation because you don't want to throw them off with anything that's new. Um, the, work, the last thing you want is for an, an athlete or a coach or a front office member to feel like they weren't prepared or they had something thrown for them from left field and then they don't want to come back. And the more the more that you use um, all of your your sources and your your tools to make sure your interview is prepared well, um, the better off you're going to be in the future to make sure that you get more and more rep repetition with your customers and that they continue to come back. What is something that you did not know before you started that you know now? A lot, a lot. Yeah, because I, I just came back for I just came from the uh, the analytics site. So starting with the podcast, I jumped right in and, and I could say I didn't touch my I didn't put my big toe in the water. I just jumped right in. So um, I would have I would have definitely learned more about <clears throat> the different tools there are around you um, using different streaming sites, um, how to connect your your platforms. Um, you know, use Hootsuite. That's a great tool if you have social accounts. Uh, Switchboard Live has been amazing for our podcast, being able to stream on multiple platforms. Um, I know a lot of people like the sports app tracker too, um, but being able to find those tools early and connect them. I know a lot of people like to use um, the standing mics. I'm not a big fan of those because I like to move around and I always get go away from them, but um, that, that would be my uh, recommendations is find your niche and tools early and then grow from there. What advice would you give upcoming future sports talk podcasts? So my best advice is to find the way that your podcast flows for you. And then you can go and find out if other podcasts can, uh, you know, what they're doing to help you. Um, so what I mean by that is when I first started, um, I didn't really have a way to break my segments up. How was I going to really find out my groove and have commercials added in and and grow and i found out that adding the boxing ring kind of context where we say round one and here's our first segment and round two here's our second segment the way that's broken up and being able to add commercial spots in there that was really my flow and, and the best way for me to catch a break in between segments and and even when we're live and we're rolling through them um, i can edit those in and be able to say okay after the bell and here's the bell and that helps me continuum with the flow of my podcast and and that's really everybody has to each their own how they want to roll with it and that that was really the best way for me so once you find your niche it's never wrong because after you do it over and over and over again it becomes a regular that's wonderful advice where can my listeners find the sports gene at along with into the lab at on social media absolutely so into the lab is still tied together with the sport gene um, when it comes to social media so um, you can find uh, all of the platforms, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube, um, anything at the end, the sport gene. So Twitter's at the sport gene, facebook.com slash the sport gene. And, and uh, I believe YouTube, you just type in the sport gene, but everything's a sport sheet everywhere. Um, and uh, that's how you can find where Into the Lab is at. And you can see the podcast link inside of the, the bio profile of all of those. Are you on any other podcast platforms such as Apple, Spotify? Yes, I'm on I'm on all of them. So I'll be on iHeartMedia starting uh, next week. That'll be the last platform. But you can find us on Google Play, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, um, anywhere, Amazon Podcast, anywhere you can find a podcast, you'll find Into the Lab. Thank you again for your interview and best of luck with the sport machine and Into the Lab. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate you having me on. It was great. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again for your interview, and best of luck. Thanks, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.